Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Ashley and this is Martin Midlife Misadventures. You hear a little rattling in the background? It's because I'm getting my cans, my jars nice and hot because we are going to can some pineapple. Fresh, fresh pineapple. So easy, so fast. Three ingredients and one is water. Okay, you can't go wrong with this. It is USDA approved for all of you who need that reassurance. Okay, so this is a solid, good, easy recipe. If you get a deal on some pineapple, you need to try it. And I want to tell you now, in case I forget during the video, use filtered water. Do not use tap water, especially if you know it's chlorinated from the city. Get you some, either use it from your Berkey system, whatever kind of water system you have, from your refrigerator, what. Ever. You always use filtered water when you're doing a recipe for canning. Are you ready to get started? Let's do it. All right, friends, we are going to can up some pineapple today. I have a few of them and I'm so excited about it. Now, the first thing you need to know, the most important part of this is cleaning your pineapple. I soak my pineapple for about 10 minutes in cold water and I use about a half a cup of baking soda in the water. Let it soak and then scrub it, okay? I haven't done mine yet. I still need to do mine. But the reason being is we are going to cut this pineapple in a lipped container because we want to catch every single bit of juice that comes off of this pineapple so we can transfer it to our pan that we're going to cook our pineapples in to can, okay? We want this clean. Another reason for me is I'm going to make pineapple vinegar out of this, and I need very, very clean rinds for that, okay? And we don't want to have to rewash them in water once we cut them because it's re going to remove some of the pineapple juice, and we want that for a very high acidic, delicious pineapple vinegar, okay? Now, we're also going to make a simple syrup. It's just four cups of water to a half a cup of sugar, and that's to top off these containers. My pineapples aren't super ripe, so I know for a fact they are not going to be as sweet as I want them. If you have super ripe pineapples and they're super sweet, you can just add water to it. You do not have to make a simple syrup. So this recipe gets easier and easier if you have nice, sweet, ripe pineapples. All right, everybody, I am going to clean up these pineapples and then we'll start cutting them up. I want you to see I have my pineapple in a big pot of water and then I take my baking soda and I sprinkle it over the top like this. If you have a big sink, you can do them all at once if you have them. Just kind of rub it in and then turn it. Turn it and repeat the process on the other side. This is how I do it. You also can take a brush. This is my brush. It's a nail brush, but I use it to scrub all my fruit. And you can really get in there and make sure you don't have any little bugs or anything like that, okay? And soak it for like 10 minutes. I'll show you what the water looks like when it's done. See how dirty my water is after just one pineapple? So please make sure you wash them. And actually, I'm pretty surprised. They're usually dirtier than this. So wash them all. All right, I'm gonna start by cutting the top off of the pineapples about an inch from the top, okay? Then I'm gonna peel with my knife, I'm gonna peel this back. I'm not gonna record the whole process because it, that would be too difficult for me. And I'm gonna try to get as close to this peel as possible because there is a lot of meat inside these pineapples. And when you use one of those little coring to tools, believe me, I used to have one, you end up losing up on so much pineapple meat. So I really, really highly recommend you cut this by hand if you want to maximize the amount of pineapple you get out of one. I just wanted to show you there are seeds inside pineapple. They're behind the little eyes so you can keep them. Take some out. Keep them to the side so you have some seeds. I can already tell that this pineapple is not very juicy. Probably should have let it ripen a little more, but we're going to go ahead and make a simple syrup. Like I said, four cups of hot water to a half a cup of sugar. That's all you need. I'm going to cut this up. I'm going to cut it down the center to start like this. 
and see this little round core right here? That little bit. You're going to cut that bit out only. Here's what that piece looks like. It's a different texture and it's just really not palatable, but you could certainly add this to your pineapple vinegar. So let's put that in our scrap container. Cut your pineapple to the size you desire your chunks to be. I want to show you my pan. Look at how little juice there was inside of these pineapples. That's a first for me. And let me tell you, I tried it and it is delicious. It's not too tart. So I'm going to mix up right now my four cups of sugar water. Okay, I have four cups of hot water and I'm adding a half a cup of sugar. Just one half a cup of sugar to it. That's it. Give it a stir because I'm actually going to cook this syrup inside these pineapples because like I said I had like zero juice come off of them and they're a little tart but they're delicious. Get it nice and stirred up and I'm going to add it right into my pineapples and we are going to start cooking these and we're going to bring them to like a low boil and let them kind of boil for 10 minutes okay so let me get my uh get my oven on here. Okay, we've got our oven going. We are going to cook these down. We're going to watch them really closely. All right, we got a little boil happening here. Just a little simmer boil like this. I'm going to let this go for 10 minutes. I have filled half my jar here for my pineapple vinegar with scraps. I really went through these scraps methodically, found all the best pieces, and filled the jar halfway. Now, the rule of thumb for your vinegar is one to two tablespoons of sugar per cup of water. So I'm going to fill it up first. I'm not going to go all the way to the top because you don't put a lid on this, okay? We're going to cover it with some cloth, and I don't want it to be able to spill. So I'll probably fill it to about here, see how many cups of water it takes. I put eight cups of water into this jar so we're gonna need eight tablespoons of sugar so I'm gonna put one in now and get one more let's put four more tablespoons now we have eight tablespoons to match our eight cups of water we need to stir this I just take a long thingy because I like to use these bottles they're just absolutely perfect I think we're gonna stir it really really good really really good and then we're going to cover it with a cloth you need to keep this in a dark place and uh, that's it guys I do not recommend using cheesecloth because fruit flies can actually get through cheesecloth just use a handkerchief or a bandana or a tea towel one layer over the top of this and uh, put a rubber band or something on it. I'll show you what I end up doing, but that's it. I've got to stir this once a day for two weeks. After two weeks, we're going to strain out all the fruit and then we're going to cover it and we're going to let it sit for a month. We're going to let it sit for one month and then we're going to try it. If it's at the level we want, if we think it tastes good, then we're going to put it in bottles and we're going to let it sit. If we feel like it's not getting sour enough, we will let it sit for another month or two weeks or something. And then we'll try it. If we feel like it's tasting good, we'll transfer it to other bottles. But that's it. That's how easy it is to make vinegar. Okay, I want you to see what I did. I put a tea towel over it, single layer, with a rubber band. I chose a dark colored one. That way I can make sure I keep the daylight off of it. Again, we're going to stir this once a day for two weeks. I'll keep you updated. All right, I think we are about ready to fill some jars. Look at that piping hot. All right, everybody, for safe canning, any kind of canning, hot food goes in hot jars, okay? You need hot, piping hot jars. This is going to keep everything super sanitary, lowers your risk of any kind of contamination, right? So scrub your jars first. And then just let them kick back in the hot water while you're waiting to can, okay? So there you go. We have a jar. We have our funnel. And we're looking for a half inch headspace on this, okay? So let's do this. You want to make sure you debubble this, okay? Because there could be 
there could be some bubbles down in there. So really get around those edges and then the center. Oh, there goes my thing. Let's see how our headspace. We're at about an inch headspace here. So we're going to add a little bit more liquid. All right, there you go. Now, some people say you don't have to wipe the rims with vinegar, but guys, I always do, and let me tell you why. A, it's great practice, okay? Be in the habit of it, but this is sticky, okay? This is sticky, sticky, sugary stuff. So I recommend just always wipe your rim with a little vinegar because it can't hurt anything. Now we need our band and rim. And we are going to go fingertip tight on these. And that's it. Into the canner. Okay, back into the canner with this one. We'll grab another can and just repeat the process. I'll show you when we're ready to seal up the canner. All right, friends. Processing time for this, for us, 20 to 25 minutes. I'll probably go closer to 25 because our elevation is like 8,000 feet, okay? Everyone else beneath 2,000 feet, water bath can for pints is 15 minutes. That is it, but you've got to bring the water up to a boil first. Once it's a rolling boil and it is covering your jars by at least an inch, you need these covered by an inch of water. Once it's boiling, put your lid on and set your timer. Like I said, we're going to do about 25 minutes here, but if you're under 2,000 feet, 15 minutes is a good processing time. All right, I've let this sit for a minute so the bubbling would stop. Everything looks great, so let's grab one out. Something broke. One of my jars broke. Do you see that? Do you see the... I have a broken jar in here somewhere. <gasps> See what happens? Okay, let's find the jar. Oh my gosh. I have never had a broken jar ever in my life. Would you look at that? There it is. See the apples all over the bottom? And here's the broken jar. This is why you really need to fill your canner. I mean fill your canner to capacity because if they knock around too much, they will break. Oh, I just can't seem to grip this. Oh, there we go. Ready for it? Look at that. The whole bottom. Oh, well, what are you going to do? We still have six really great jars. Look at how beautiful, guys. That is going to be so tasty. All right, everybody. How about that pineapple? Six jars. I'm happy about it. I'm sad that one broke, but these things happen. And I should have packed that canner just a little bit more full. I put that one quart right in the center. I probably should have put three pints to really make sure everything was snug in there. But again, what are you going to do? We have six jars of pineapple, and I'm super happy about that and the vinegar. And if you've never had pineapple vinegar, you haven't lived because it, it makes the best salad dressing you could ever imagine, okay? So save your scraps. You can make all kinds of vinegars with pretty much any kind of fruit scrap. And you saw how easy that is. Once a day for two weeks, stir it. Then we're going to drain it. Then it's going to sit. It's just a waiting game, really. And it costs a bunch of nothing to make it. So start making your own vinegars and start canning your pineapple. Please give us a thumbs up, share and subscribe, and we are going to be talking to you really soon. God bless you all.